Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Tech Talk Live. Today's special guest is a bright and shining star, Jotana Roland. I know on the screen, she has her middle name is Nail Tech. <laughs> and so it's not even her proper last name, but please know that her last name is Roland. And she is a bright, shining star and somebody so perfect to come on for today. So thank you, Jotana. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Well, sadly, Jotana messaged me at what, eight something my time thinking that we were getting ready to go live because guys, guess what? I sent her the wrong time. <laughs> I didn't translate it right. So she came out and nothing is working. Her cell phone's not working. It's frozen. No, it's still not working. Yeah. So I was out on my porch three hours early trying to get everything set up, trying to find the right place because you know, everybody's home. So there's no privacy. And I'm like struggling and I'm sweating a little bit and I've got extension cords and I brought the fan out and my phone is stuck with, uh, do you trust this computer? And that's it. I tried to fix it and um, it called the police. It told me to hold down the side buttons and then it called Lexington County 911. Uh -huh. So yeah, so now I'm on my Mac and mm -hmm. it's the right time. I know. I mean, so I apologize profusely that I gave her the wrong time because I always translate the time, but I gave her two hours before instead of two hours later. But then you got ready so early and then all that happened. And I know when you called me, you were just like, oh my gosh. And 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 we realized that, you know what, nothing's going to hold us back. We're going to find a way to connect. And we did. So, you know, as much as the chaos that's out there, we get nervous about it. All we can do is take a deep breath and go, okay, you know what, now let's restart. And so thank you for spending your entire day waiting to go live with us today and share your story. Absolutely, absolutely. It was fun. I couldn't do anything but laugh at myself, so. You did, and sad. you sent me the funniest video because all you could do is record yourself on some device and send it to me because you couldn't message me. Yeah. And so um, again, defy all odds, right? We're gonna make this happen. <laughs> absolutely. I love absolutely. it. Well, Jotana, I want to spotlight you um, really fast before this goes, because you are what I call a shining star and you have this laughter to you. That's amazing. You have this spirit about you that's magical. And so I know that's going to take our Tech Talk Live into a whole different direction. So before we go there, I want to go back and ask you, how did you get started in the beauty industry? Oh, I, uh, OK. So. I was kind of a screw up in high school. Um, I, I was, man. And I've always had this, th these great capabilities to do whatever it is I want to do. But I was too worried about who was doing who and who was doing what. And um, I actually dropped out of high school my senior year. Um, my GPA was like a 0.02. It was really bad. Um, I dropped out. And a couple weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. So I got pregnant my senior year of high school and um, I went running back to the school and I was like, hey, you guys have got to help me because I've got this baby coming. You've got to re-enroll me. You know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know that I have to graduate high school. You know, life got real and it got real really quick. Um, so uh, luckily for me, the administrative staff and the counselors and all those, they loved me. Like, even though I raised a little bit of hell, just a little bit, they loved me. So they were like, oh, we're so glad you're here. Um, and so I brought my GPA up from a 0 0.02 to like a 2.3 within a semester doing lots of online stuff and at home stuff. Um, and my mother was working at the cosmetology school doing financial aid at the time. And she's like, Joe, you know, you got to do something. Come to, come to, they had a nail tech program, a 600 hour nail tech program. Um, state of South Carolina only requires you to have 300 hours. So 600 hours was really cool. Um, it qualified for financial aid. And so I went to nail school because I wanted the cool kit. Another. I wanted to learn how to do my own nails. And I wanted to get a refund check. Because I heard that if you go to school and get financial aid, you get a refund check. Yeah. And that is literally why I went to school. Um, and I found my purpose. So, you know, I went for all the wrong reasons, but I loved it. I loved the people. Um, I had no idea that my entire life, God had been grooming me to be a nail tech anyway. Like, 
I used to mix different polishes and I didn't think anything about it. You know, art classes and um, ribbons and the state fair for art pieces and all this stuff. You know, I'm like, man, it's just art, you know, it's just whatever. Um, but when I started doing well and my instructor and my peers were like, oh, God, you're good at that. You know, I picked up the book in the acrylic um, before we even got there in class because I just wanted to do my own nails. So, um, yeah, that's that's how I got started. I and, um, love it. Your words yeah, that started was for all the wrong reasons. I was like, that's powerful. Ah, yeah. I love it even more. Yeah. <laughs> And so somewhere there, a, a switch went off into you and you were like, you know, I think I'm going to continue on with this. So did you immediately like go booth rent or commission or did you just go for it and say, I'm going to open my own? Well, um, there was this big salon in town um, called Pink Butterfly Signature Salon and Spa. And it was the new big upcoming thing. And I wanted to be a part. Um, so I put in an application and I went and I did my interview and I got the job. Um, at the time, it was a really sweet deal. Um, she was offering $250 a week salary on top of 40% commission. Oh, she yeah. supplied all the product. Yeah. So coming out of school, I was like, you know, but I didn't really have any clients. So at the time, being 18 years old, I'm thinking this, you know, I'm, I'm making this, but I'm not making all these numbers that I see that can be made and I was, I was, I was hell on wheels, man. Even at 18, even, even after I had my son, you know, it took a while for me. So, but I did nails through all of it. <laughs> I and, um, love it. And so how yeah. many years now have you been licensed doing this? I, uh, yeah, yeah. 2009 helped me with math, Amy. 11. 11. Yeah. Yeah. 11. July will be 12 years. I love it. And you know what, despite being um, everything that you went through, but you're being a mom at the same time. Like Absolutely. think about how, what you gave up on and look back and go, that was the easy time through the hardest time of being a brand new mom. I was still going to school and then being a business and building a clientele. Like you shined in your, in your, in the toughest time. And, yeah. you know, right now, I think we need to put that into perspective of everything that's going on in our world, that you can do that. It's your determination and your passion behind it. So I, I always curious, there's a fire behind us that we always want to prove somebody wrong almost, right? Okay. So before somebody that you just, was it the power of your child that you want to be better for them? And so you used that, or was there somebody that just was like, you're not going to amount to anything, just be a dropout and whatever. And you used that fuel. What was your story? Um, honestly, just it, it, neither one of those things. I think it, it, it should, the answer should be my child. The answer should be my child motivated um, but it was the hustle. It was the, what can I do? It was, it was, I was very money driven, especially in the beginning, you know, um, of course my child, of course there are things I had to take. I also had a lot of help. Um, my mom picked up a lot of the slack for me, even while I was working, um, for many years, I made a paycheck and didn't help her pay a bill and lived in her house, you know, um, which, if I could change that, I would, you know, yeah. but it is what it is. It's part of my story and it's who I am. And yeah. um, she helped She helped a lot with that. Um, am I staying on topic? Is that the question you asked me? Yes. I'm a wonderer, yeah. Amy. And then with that, though, what? so throughout your career, you decided you were going to take some next levels and next levels. So where did you build the confidence and get the knowledge to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do now? Um, everything happened organically. Um, nothing was intentional until like 2016. So from 2009 to 2016, I was just rolling. I was just rolling where the wind blew me. Um, I worked in a non-standard salon for a year. I worked in um, a day spa where we just did uh, natural manicures, pedicures. Um, I just kind of went wherever the wind blew me and uh, the knowledge that I was acquiring through all this, I didn't realize it was for a purpose. I mean, I'm t I was 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I don't know, you know, I'm just rolling with the punches. I'm just doing nails. 
um, for a long time, Amy, for a very long time, longer than I'm going to tell you guys, I used MMA acrylic because I didn't know. You know, oh, um, when I was in nail school, we went to the, the, you know, Asian nail supply store and it had all the cheap good stuff. And that's where we got our acrylic from. You know, it wasn't until 2016 when I went to my first trade show in Orlando premiered that I really even started learning about my, my career. I, I kind of yeah. like just did my own thing. I YouTube university and just did whatever. There was nobody around to really show me or help me. Um, but when I, I, I moved to a different city about an hour and a half away from here in 2014 and I started working for a nail bar. Um, and there were a couple of us girls in there and, and the girl that owned it, she had a lot of followers on Instagram. I didn't even know what Instagram was like that. I didn't have one, you know. And um, so she, she taught me and she taught me you know, about different things. And she, she would just say things like, oh, yeah, I was watching nail videos this morning. I'm like, you can do that? You wake up in the morning and watch nail videos? <laughs> so I kind of started getting into Instagram and seeing things and, and seeing people and seeing different techniques and ideas. And I don't know, it just kind of blew up from there. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I could be that one day. I want to I wanna be that. Yeah. I want to have my nails and nails magazine. And I want to be... An Instagram star and you know <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah so everything happened organically until then and then I moved back to my hometown Columbia in 2017 and 2016 is when Chrome was released right and mm -hmm. Wildflowers was the first company to have Chrome and I didn't know anything about Wildflowers nails and so I had an assistant at the time and I was like, find out where to get this Chrome stuff from because everyone's got this Chrome, you know? And um, my son's right here. Do you want to come oh, say hi? Come on, you're standing here. Come say hi. <laughs> come on. Look at um, say hi. We have a haircut for weeks because we've been quarantined. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so my son is 25. <laughs> and oh, oh just wow. cherish these moments. <laughs> yeah. I do sometimes. <laughs> oh, I can but, um, tell you, I think what you deal with now is social media. And stuff. So think about how it was new to you as an adult. And we had to go back and learn these kids surpass us in that knowledge for social media. It comes naturally to them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. My two year old worked the phone. She knows how to go to the YouTube video she wants and everything. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's amazing. Yeah. But it, it also would be a lot tougher right now to try to contain. <laughs> <laughs> the powers right. that they can on the phone, yeah. And so, yeah. so Michelle's on here and she says, Jotana, how's that artwork coming? This is from your coach that's asking. So tell us a little bit more about that. Hey, Michelle. Hey, coach. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I have a group of wonderful women who are pushing me to my next, okay? Uh, Michelle Baker and Rosanna who is, Russ Anna is my boo thing. I talk to Russ all the time. Um, and they have put together a competition team to compete in Orlando, which is supposed to be coming up. Right. Um, and I went a couple of weeks ago down to Georgia to hang with them and hang with Michelle and Madison came up and um, um, Nicole Franklin and, I'm having a brain fart because I'm on live right now. That's the only reason. Yeah, but just magical people that inspire you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we had dinner and then we sat around and we talked about competition nails and we came up with an idea for me. We all were kind of brainstorming together. I got to watch Rosanna create some sculpture things, which was really cool. Um, and she wants to know how my artwork is going. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. We'll talk about it later, coach. <laughs> I can like feel her whooping me from Georgia right now. You know, I really have found so like I was so motivated a few weeks ago. So this is week five of um, isolation on my end. And so 
with that, like the first week I did, I just slept and enjoyed the time thinking, oh, this will be over in a week, right? Yeah. Week two, I was like, I got a little motivated, had my little cry, I was like, okay, things are changing. Three, four, five, like, okay. Now it's it's a lot more real and it and it's hitting your gut and it and, you, and we don't know what's happening. We don't know how much longer. And sadly, it looks like I'm gonna be shut down for another additional four weeks. I mean, that's what's projected out there. So I'm like, okay, all right, toughen up. <laughs> What are we gonna do? Because I'm not gonna waste another five weeks not doing anything. And so I've been making myself, putting my makeup on, putting my hair together, doing things in the norm to make myself get back into a routine so that I don't look back and say, I just kind of slept for 10 weeks. Right. I want to know I was still productive and creative during that time. And so for me, it's been a lot. I'm not, I'm not a writer, but it's been getting notebooks and just writing down these plans, these ideas, getting them all out of my head and then, you know, outlining each one. And so I don't have little kids, though, entertaining me and making me miserable at the same time. I don't have anybody here to, like, distract me. And so in a way, that's good. But in a way... I, I miss that. And so you have kids to focus on. You have other things to focus on. It's okay to focus on that and not feel guilty at all. Yeah. 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 So um, I actually experienced the like bulk of my emotion at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. I decided to shut down two weeks prior to when the state um, mandated us to because it was just something in my gut. I, I can't, you know, I, I've got people who work in nursing homes. Your phone is lit up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. The one that's stuck. See, it's still going off. Oh it's no. Still stuck. So people um, are like, why aren't you responding to me? How come you're not? <laughs> I can't even cut it off. Oh man. But, um, sorry, but I didn't yeah. interrupt. No, it's okay. All of that, all of that hit me really hard in the beginning. I think now people are like, oh my gosh, this is going to be longer than expected. But in the beginning, that was my thought. I, I deal with a lot of anxiety on an everyday basis. Um, and so since I've been home, it's been kind of up and down, up and down. Honestly, I've had more bad days than good. And, and that's just being real, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but the bulk of it hit me at the beginning because I'm like, if this is as serious as what they're saying it is, there's no way two weeks, there's no way four weeks is going to be enough time. So for me, the anxiety hit like, oh, when am I going to be able to go back to work? Yeah. And my clients are out. You know, there are probably a lot of business classes that tell you otherwise. Don't discuss politics. Don't discuss religion. Don't get too close. Yeah. You know. I'm not like that. Like I build relationships and nails, that's what nails is about for me. Um, and my clients are very special to me. And of course that means that I've gotten my heart broken by them, you know, but I don't want my heart to harden because of that. Um, but I miss them. I miss them. And some days, you know, some days we're there for them. And some days they were there for me. Some days it's my day to cry and some days it's their day to cry. Mm -hmm. And I kind of beat myself up for that sometimes because I feel like that's not what I was taught to do, but it is what it is. That's my reality. So being home has been hard. You know, there, there are some days where we're, you know, we're homeschooling right now. There are some days where I don't feel like that. You know, I just don't feel like it. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm already trying to fight these anxieties and these, emotions and these ups and these downs and you know I, I have been having to tell myself like it's okay it's okay to get behind it's okay to take a break it, it's okay to not do any nails because I've also beat myself up for not being productive because I haven't been productive I've got my house kind of clean you know but my baseboards aren't scrubbed like what I said I was going to do if I had time you know <laughs> And, and at the end of the day, I realized, too, that all those are just bullcrap excuses because I have all this time in the world and I still haven't done it. Yeah. I mean, not even as far as you where I've taken my thoughts from my head to a notebook. You know, I haven't I haven't done much of anything. Um, you have. You've been present in the moment. I've been and present with your children. Yeah. With 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so I try to cut myself or extend myself a little grace in those areas. And that's not easy. I'm saying that now, like, like it's easy, but it's not. And I fight it every day, yeah. you know, to tell myself that it's okay. And we're going to get through this and, <laughs> you know, we're going to come out better than ever. Um, even if we, we don't are. use our time productively, even if we use it to rest, because some of us need rest. Mm-hmm. If, if if nail techs that are watching, if you guys work like I work, you're you're warranted a couple of weeks on your couch with your hands in your britches. If that's what you want to do, you know, like we, <laughs> we deserve that. So yeah, I love it, and and it's so true. We can and don't feel guilty. I was I've been live so much the last couple of weeks because I've you know power of voice. I can't contain it. My clients aren't here to listen to me, so you guys have to hear me out. <laughs> and so, but I agree, there's something about that when we took a day off and we had a client that needs a repair, we felt guilty not getting that client in for a repair, right? We we don't, there's no guilt. This is not our fault. This is nothing that we can control. So let's just enjoy that. Well, I'm, I'm had to change my mindset and said, this is a gift of time. And as you yeah. said, how many times we said, if I had the time, I'd do this. If I had the time, oh no, we got the time. Are we doing it? No. no. Because no. we realized that those things we stressed on really were not that important. We kept adding more to a plate that we were not going to do. And if we had the time, we don't want to do it. So why Absolutely. not fill that play and the gift of time with, like you said, Maybe the hands down the bridges. Maybe it's sewing, whatever. I just spoke in Master's Mindset Monday about the word spark. And the spark is to illuminate an idea. And it's illuminated for a moment and then it's kind of gone. You can either choose to feed it and ignite it. And then, so what happens when we get into the action? So I was like, let's look about people who um, crochet or sew or they make things, right? They're creative, they're artists, okay? So let's think about right now, they're, they're bored and they're digging into the time and they're doing what they enjoy doing that maybe they don't always have the time to do. So they're sewing, they're painting, they're whatever. We don't make all these quilts and all these masks and all these things to keep them. Right. When you have a hobby and you're passionate about what you do, you spark the idea, you ignite it, which is the action, and you shine because we always give it away. Whether it's our word, whether it's our time, and we have <laughs> of time when we want to help, or it's through handmade gifts or whatever, we we shine when we give that stuff away and we feel better about it. And so use this gift of time to embellish in whatever you want to. Do not clean the baseboards. Use that. 15 hours that it would take to clean stupid baseboards towards something that would fulfill you and allow you to be able to shine. And so, yes, I love it. Yeah. So, um, Russ challenged me last week. She's probably a little disappointed in me right now because, um, she challenged me to like a nail off. Okay, like a nail art off. Yeah, we haven't made it, um, but she wanted to. Anyway, I won't. I won't give away the whole idea. But I've been slacking. Like she's done every day this week. She's done her part. I have done one to her, probably four. <laughs> and it's here. I can't see. But um, I haven't seen her on here yet. So you're not accountable to her just yet. <laughs> she's gonna get me. But, um, and I, I called her the other day and I told her, I was like, Russ, I know like in my heart, I feel like I want to get up and do something. I feel like I want to paint nails. I miss nails. I do. But then there's a big part of me that's like, I just don't want to do it. I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. You know? And I think, I think that's a rut. Um, I think, I think that's a rut. Still, it's okay if, if, if you don't. I feel led to get off my tail and do something productive. Like that's how I feel in my shanana. Okay. In my spirit. That's how I feel. Like I need to get up and do something, but my body, my mind doesn't want to. So I'm telling Russ, I'm like, yeah, no, I want to, I want to, but I have to be honest. Also, there's a part of me that's like, 
I don't want to paint nails. I don't want to get up. I don't want to set my stuff up. I don't want to clean up behind myself. I don't want to make a mess. I don't want to touch glitter. I don't want, you know, and that's a weird place to be in. I don't really know what to do with that because every other day I get up, I go to work for 10 hours. You know, I have these relationships with clients. I do nails and I come home and continue my home life. And that's all I know. So it's, yeah. It's, it's so true. Though. And you know, even when we don't have this time off, we fall into the same rut, or I always say you lose your mojo. We, that's natural. You could be on your highest high and producing your best work. And then all of a sudden, nothing's comparing to that. And we, and then we're not motivated anymore. Or I, I did that goal. And, and yeah. that's natural in any career, but we're creative people. So we take it harder because we feel like we need to be creative all the time. For some reason, we need to be on our best all the time and we're not. So like right. Michelle agreed with you and actually it's perfect right now. She says that give and the take is a part of the business that you know who can um, get close and to learn. It's the hard way who you can't. Wait, maybe I need my glasses. I, I think I understood where you're coming from is that give and the take is part of the business. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and we do get close to our clients. They become our family members. In fact, we get kind of closer to some of our clients than our own family members. Like yeah. this, and when you said the heart gets broken, it's because we miss them and we worry about them. And this is bigger than just the core of our family. This is a lot. And and for me, like in, in Tech Talk Worldwide, I've gotten to know people all around the world that I'm just like, oh, it's, it's now hitting that area and it's now hitting that area. And they're just now making these posts. And I'm just like, just, ah getting heavy on your heart and that mojo and the creativity doesn't come in those heavy times it takes other people or us reaching out to other people to help fill that for us to go all right i got this and then one day you're going to be like okay i don't know why but this lime green glitter is calling to me so today i'm gonna poke my finger in that <laughs> And then that's yeah. going to spark something else. And then that's going to spark. And then pretty soon you're on the high and you're the one lifting somebody else up out of their, you know, darkness or out of their mojo. That's the magic about this connection that we can have, even if it's online. I love it. I love that you have, I do the same thing. I have these people that I can reach out to and say, Hey, I need you today. I, Gail Harris was my person for all morning this morning. I cried hard this morning because I had something weighing heavy on my heart. And it had, it just was like, I do Master's Mindset Mondays. I love what I do. What I'm saying is from the heart. And I'm, and when I say it, it's real. And I thought, how can I share this bigger? What can I do to be bigger, bigger, bigger? bigger? Like, I need to share this with a megaphone out there. And like I told you earlier, I said, I'm so thankful the internet doesn't have a virus if the internet was broken too right now oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah and so um we need those people to reach out to and if you don't have somebody or you know somebody that naturally doesn't have the power to lift themselves up they don't have the inner magic like Tana does or the i feel that i do that we they need somebody else be that somebody else open up and allow them, use your big old shoulders. We have them for a reason and allow them to share. Because I'm telling you right now, if we weren't able to connect with other people and we felt alone and we felt like right now we're not needed, we're not productive. Do you imagine how that would feel? We've been there, we know the feeling, but we don't stay there long, right? But there's right. people that don't know how to get out of that. We have to be that sunshine, yeah. So dip your finger in the green glitter. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay to see a therapist if that's what you need. If you don't feel a connection with anybody you trust. Like I, I started therapy. I started therapy a month and a half ago. And it helps. You know, I think for me, I get so comfortable with everybody around me. And I'm so transparent. And I'm such an open book that, you know, you can share to. I believe that we need people, but I believe also that we can share too much with too many people. Do you know what I mean? Get yeah. too many opinions, too many voices in our head, too many. Mm -hmm. Like I told you earlier, you know, constantly looking for somebody to bridge a gap for me that I need to stand in myself and and, and work out myself. Um, so I've been doing a little soul searching, and a little separating from telling I guess we're going to put it in layman's terms, telling everybody my business, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not all of my clients need to know my business. Like some of them are there for that because that's what they're, 
their assignment is in my life, but some of them are not. They don't need to hear it. So for me, I I reached out to a therapist so that I could have someone to talk to every Monday just for an hour and say, hey, this is what's happening in my life right now. Um, And and it's it's not everywhere. It's I I don't leave feeling like that was too far. I shouldn't have said that because I'm always going too far. You know, I'm like. I'm like a little boy. I little boy dirty jokes and farts and stuff. I'm always <laughs> I'm always being inappropriate in some way, you know? And I leave work sometimes thinking, Joe, you know, should you have said that or you know? So yeah. yeah. I've so I've been in the industry for 28 years and I do know what you're talking about because there's a time after maybe about five years that you've made these connections. These clients are coming back. You're accountable to them, right? You've shared all this stuff and they're like, why are you making the same decisions? Why are you doing that? And then we're looking at them like, crap, I'm going to let them down. So I better be changing something. Right. And then we feel all this extra pressure because you're right. We shared so much, but thank goodness they listened and that they chose us. And that they still continue to want to come back and be a part of our mess. But you do get to a certain point where you realize that you didn't need to project your mess to all these other people. They don't need to project the mess to you. I always say control your table. You don't have to listen to everything they have to say. And if they're not the right fit for you, don't invite them back to your table. Create the environment that you want to be in, that you can thrive in, that you can be creative in, that you can have be you still. But you don't have to go all the way you, right? You know, you're like oh, you're the professionals to go all the way you because nobody can handle all of us, right? We're powerful. We're strong, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mine even has a name. My all the way. My therapist and I named her. Her name is Jolene. <laughs> and she would take your man, honey. <laughs> I you know, love it. So we have to we have to balance Jolene and Jotana, you know. I do not have multiple personality disorder, but you know, we named her something mm-hmm. because it's I think in emotion versus logic with me a lot of the times I wear my heart on my sleeve and I lead with my heart. Yeah. Um I, I do. I lead with my heart and that is not always good um, right. at all. We- so we get to good places with our heart. However, when we extend it out too much, it does get broken or you extend out to too many people. You're accountable to too many people. You feel like a failure. And that's the last thing that we want to be is a failure. Right. Right. And so you're, you're right. Sometimes we have to rein it in. Even our bestest friends, even my mom, who I talk to all the time, doesn't need to know everything. Right. So you share with what people can handle and like, like what you did, that's so powerful that you reached out to somebody who is an expert in that and you're going to get the feedback and you don't feel guilty giving it all to them because that's what they're there for. And there are so many groups right now that are offering free counseling for anxiety, depression, financial everything out there. I, um, I'm a part of this other um, big challenge and they were talking about this the other day. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to Google because I don't want to just know there's resources out there. I want to know what's out there. What website can I send them to? What person can I send them to? I want to be a connecting resource. And it was everywhere. So many sites had it. And it was like, whoa, there's not just one. This is powerful. People are giving their time to be able to do a Skype call with you and say, I'm listening. And you can see a face and you can let it out. It's phenomenal because normally you'd have to pay quite a bit for this, right? Or trade a lot of nails for it. No, yeah. it's available right now because they know their superpower. They know that and they're willing to share that and open up for other people. And it's like, thank you for that. You know, I'm fortunate. I'm not to that point yet. I'm not saying I won't. I've never been right. there, but I'm telling you, you can feel kind of like, man, how can it, how can we help change this? And, you know, some your stuff in your closet starts to come out where, you know, your depression triggers another depressed and it triggers something else and takes you back to childhood. And you're like, I guess I better deal with that now, right? <laughs> Absolutely. That's a real, and and you know, therapists and professionals, they can they can what I was seeking was for somebody to give me the tools that I needed. Mm. 
to understand, you know, like first, I think you have to be self-aware, right? right. Um, you, you have to be aware that you're having more bad days than good days. You have to be aware that you might have a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of depression, highs and lows, um, and then go get the tools. If you're aware enough to be aware that you need help, you know, then you're smart enough to use the tools that the therapists give you. They're there. Uh, and they've been phenomenal. Yeah. You know, it's like a world switch. Like, yeah. Doo -doo. So to yeah. give you that direct website, go to Dr. Phil. No joke. His name kept coming up on every platform. Dr. Phil is not only taking calls, taking emails and everything, and then he's talking to you privately, but he's also doing it as a group. Dr. Phil has resources like crazy and think about the magnitude that he has and people want to ride on that rainbow so that's a great resource um i just missed it oh shoot i might have missed it oh toral's on here and toral says i just listening to you guys made me go and find a nail file and file my nails with a heart she goes like i'm with my nail girls so you know we can be therapy for each other but sometimes we need something bigger right yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Julia says, I told my hubby when I'm done pouting, I'll let him know. Exactly. Sometimes we don't know what it is that, you know, the, the feeling that we have. It just is a feeling, right? And that's normal. Do not look at yourself that you are exaggerating or, or that you're not handling this well. This is uncertain times for all of us. None right. of us know how to handle this. There's not one person. But you're right with the right tools and that if you can implement them correctly, you can build that yourself. That's that's fabulous. And and like you said, um, um what did you just say, Amy? Ah, about having the tools and being able to rebuild like that. Um, no, never mind. It was great. It left. Hey, <laughs> Kathy Blair. <laughs> Um, so Anna says, I feel the same way and not sure I even want to get back and do it anymore. She's confused. And this is a time where our mind, you put the person upside down. Isn't that so true? We feel like our worlds have been turned upside down. And that's where we get to refresh our why. And, and, and so I've, oh, man, my phone is lit up, which I love that people are reaching out to me. I want you to do that. So, you know, please do. It's hard because people are saying, okay, Amy, I made the decision. I can't afford the rent anymore. I don't want to put the, the owner into another bind. They might be able to find another renter or whatnot. I just can't do this. So I've, I've shut my business and I'm like, yep, you made a decision that you need to right now. And I respect that. Now the decision I want you to do is use this time and figure out who you are and what do you want to do next? And it might be that you reopen in even a better place that fits you. It might be your own place and you reopen stronger and you might be back into doing nails. But right now it's okay to take that step back. Do not feel guilty about making that choice. You were also thinking about the other person. You know, I, I said, and her name was Mary. I, I won't say her last name. Um, she was an older lady that owned the building that I rented for many, many years. And um, I knew my income every month was her source of income. Right. I had, if I, at this moment, was renting a building from Mary, do you know the extra guilt I would have? And not because I couldn't pay the rent, it was because I knew she wouldn't have that. Yeah. that pressure. And then the other girls that worked me with me, I mean, I had, a, I had a huge salon. Like I couldn't imagine what I would wanna do. They have babies, they have other things. And I thought, you know what? At this time I would probably, if I had a storefront, I don't know that I would close. I would work my way through as much as I could, but I would probably go back and become an EMT again. I know I can do it. I was if I was an EMT before. It's not the, my favorite thing to do, but I do know that I would get back into something that I knew I would have employment or I'd go work at the grocery store. I really would. Like I would do that so that I would have the money to pay Mary for the rent. Or I would have money to, you know, give to the girls for their kids because it's not about me. If I'm able, then I'm able to do something about it. And so sometimes us stepping back and saying, I can't do what I'm passionate about right now. I can't afford to be a nail tech right now. Do you know when you reopen, how are you going to change your price list? How are you going to change your hours? How are you going to change what products you use so that you can be more profitable? 
Do you know how much stronger you're going to be when you reopen on your own terms? And you're going to be like, you know what, in case this ever happens again, I want to know that I have the finances, not just for me and not just to, to help one other person and my children. I want the finances to know I can continue to pay that mortgage so that Mary is comfortable. We, we start living bigger than ourselves. And I thought, wow, so I don't have a mortgage. I mean, I, I, my, my studio is an extension off of my home. So it's, it's not in my home, but it's in my home. And so, you know, with that, I don't have a rent to have to pay. I don't have a Mary, but there's, they're still out there. And I'm like, I still want to help them. Even if I don't know them, I don't know how right now I I'm, that's what I cried about this morning was like the messages that I'm getting. I, Amy, I did it. I, I shut my doors. I packed up all my stuff. And did you know that all my stuff fed into two, two tubs? And how would we ever look at all of our stuff like that? And it just broke my heart because I'm like, I want to do a fundraiser. I want to do something. Where do you pull money from? People don't have, there's, we're not give. you know, but I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And all I can say is that we just have to be strong for each other and we have to reach out. And you know what? Closing and putting all your stuff into two tubs. I'm proud of you for that. That's the toughest decision. It's tougher to close than it ever was to open, right? Yeah. yeah. And to not feel discouraged if you have to make that choice right now. This is not your fault. This is not your fault. But what you need to do is remember you had a full clientele that supported you and believed in you. You need to stay connected with them. They believed in you. They paid to come see you and get your chaos therapy, right? Absolutely. Stay connected with those people and yeah. let them know they matter because you know what? They they don't know what you're going through. You've always been the bright, shining star. They think that you're perfect all the time. Maybe you're not. It's okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we got to turn that switch or it, those floodgates won't stop. I'm telling you. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. So get it together, so, Amy. <laughs> So let's talk, let's talk a little nails right now, right? So, so you and Rosanna are doing this uh, nail off back and forth, which I love little things like that. You grow from that. I know uh, Tracy Vincent came out and did the Rona. Um, it, it's like a 20 some day great challenge, right? The Rona yeah. challenge, I think is what it's called. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, yeah. I've seen some work, yeah. Yeah, so when you go back to work and you can do one design, whatever it is, what do you like? I can't wait till I could do this one design again. What is it? <sighs> Ombre with the sponge. <laughs> I love it. It's so simple. And so, so those who know me know that I love sponges. Um, I love a very particular type of makeup sponge. <gasps> That's I, 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 I do all of my ombres with sponging techniques yes. and a lot of times this is, this so goes against like the nail rules. Okay. Like <laughs> the product rules, but sometimes, well, used to all of the time now, sometimes I'll even sponge an entire color on and clean up and use like an IBD hard gel yeah. as a gel pop. Uh -huh. Um, I can't wait to sponge because I've got these little nail tips. You know, I've got these little things that hold the tips and stuff with my techie tack. Yeah. Um, but I can't, you know, it's like a good beat. Like when they're beating your face, you know, yeah. I'm like yeah. beating the nail with the sponge and there's this <laughs> circular motion, you know? Yeah. And it makes me really happy. Uh -huh. um, do you have a video out there to share with other people how to do that? Um, I don't. Okay. I, so I might. There's your fire. You need to share that. So I have it. You guys know me. I have it. You guys can go to the nail source or go into tech talk or go to the YouTube. I have where I show how to do the boomer and ombres using a, a nice makeup wedge. Right. But yeah. Jovana, your technique might be different than mine. Your everything might be different and you want to do that. You're passionate about it. It's your time to share it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Amy. There's Amy. another challenge for you, right? Yeah. Join join the group. <laughs> Get in line, sister. <laughs> so I at Thanksgiving, um, 
I had done clients and then the holiday came. And then right after that, my niece got married in Arizona and we flew to Arizona and I was shut down for a couple of weeks. When I came back, I had influenza A and double pneumonia and it knocked me out. And then the holidays happened or at that time, I just had pneumonia. The holidays happened. So I had time off at Christmas. So I, I hadn't seen clients at this time for a month. Right. Then in January, I was teaching classes. So I went to Utah. I came back. Then I had influenza and double pneumonia. I was down. And then I got better, went back to Utah, taught a class, came back, quarantined myself through that week. And during that week, we got shut down. So I never got to do Christmas artwork. I never got to do Valentine's Day artwork. So for me, I don't know why I want to sprinkle on glitter. And I just want to sprinkle it. It's snowing still here. Do not let the sun deceive you. Before Jatana and I went live, I looked. It's 22 degrees outside. Like, it's so cold. We got eight in, over eight inches of snow last night or the night before. And um, it's freezing out there. That's deceiving. So anyways, the snow, I videotaped it to send it to my husband because he said I missed the snow. And I thought... Yeah, you've been gone too long because I don't miss the snow. I'm so ready for it to be over. I want the green. I want to sit outside like you. But the snow had that sparkle. You know the white glitter over the white gel? How it spark okay, that's all I could think about. Like, seriously, I was sitting there. I'm like, I just want to sprinkle white glitter into the white gel. I just, yeah. <laughs> so funny. I love it. And so... Yes, I hope that you do share a video on how you do your ombre with a sponge because it is, it's fun, it's easy, and it might help somebody else who is like, oh, I could never do that. I, I can never figure it out. But you can, you can. There's, there's, there's like little, you know, a lot of art techniques. People are new in the industry and they're like, oh, how do you do that? Number one, you don't know how many people I screwed up to get to where I'm at. Okay. <laughs> That's always the number one answer. Um, but a lot of it is just like knowing the trick, you know, knowing the technique. Like, and then if you've, I think some people have it and some people don't. I'm not saying the people that don't have it can't make it. They just have to work harder. You know what I mean? Like some, some yep. people have a natural, you know, ability to do art. And for those people, you know, to be able to just watch a technique be done once, it would be that simple. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I've gone on to these people doing 3D the way that they do, or those candied um, ball things. I've made some. They never turn out like Dana Clifton's do. Like no. my one stroke never turns out. You know, like I'm looking at these people. I'm like, but there's other areas I get to shine. You don't have to master all of them. Right but master the right. ones that you are good at. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Robin says, I love your openness, Jotana. That is what made it such a um, pleasure to hang out with you at nail camp. So. Aww. Is that Robin Stopper? Yes. And isn't it so true that people, um, you know, we meet them online or maybe you didn't know them online and you meet them at a camp or you meet them at a show and then you reconnect and you're just like that one person. Sometimes it, it, we go to, to a trade show and there's hundreds of people around us, right? But there's one person that you just connected with a, just a tiny bit more. I remember the first time I met Rosanna in person was at the Utah Now Show a couple of years ago. And I was like in awestruck of her. Like I couldn't wait. In fact, we took so many pictures and I and we hugged. Like I remember she was working the wildflowers booth and there was like this... Um, I don't know, partition between us. And we were yeah. hugging over it. And she's like, oh, uh-uh. And she moves the partition so she could be <laughs> right there. And it was the biggest hug. And let me tell you, that's what I took home with me. So that, that one person is the, the one thing that can just make you go, wow, I want to be like them when I grow up, you know? Yeah. A bag of love. Russ is like a bucket of love. Yeah, and that's so true. Yeah. Um, Anna says, um, have those shutdowns caused issues with your personal relationships? I feel like being home has me see so much about my relationship that is not about, I now feel like I want to live alone. Anna, thank you. Thank you for opening up just now and being vulnerable with us. Because let me tell you, I am alone, right? There's nobody in my house. There's a guinea pig, right? I've come to realize the opposite. 
I love my husband and I would rather be miserable with him home or kids making a mess than be alone. And I, that's the first time I've had to realize, like, I don't want to be alone. I need a dog or I need something. Now, I don't have a broken relationship to have to look at. But on the opposite end, yes. Isn't it so true? You need to open up and you guys need to communicate with each other. And it's going to be hard because where do you go right now, right? So you're making things work. But if you stopped and realized that that relationship, that job, that that person is not healthy for you, good. Realize it now. Make that change because you have the rest of your life to live. And it's your time to take control of what you want to do with it, right? And it's hard. Trust me, I've been a divorce. I know what it's like to leave with two kids and go, I'm not going to live like this anymore. It is so hard. And it wasn't during a crisis. So I could only imagine the extra pressure you would feel right now of knowing that you got nothing. We don't even have an employment coming in. So how can we change, make changes, make those changes? The rest of it will naturally, like like Jotana said, it will organically fall in place that it needs to. And thank you. You can private message me if you want as well. Thank you for sharing that. And no matter which side of, of, of that you're on, whether you are alone and you're like, I don't want to be here anymore. I, I'm, I'm going to get on some online dating sites or something or get a dog or whatever it is realize that all of us are struggling with something right now, right? We can relate to each other. I can see both ends of this. And so um, I'm so proud of you. So proud of you for sharing that moment at this time and getting that out. You, you have soul searching you need to do. You need to reach out to the right people that can help you with that. And you know who they are. We all do. And if you don't, and it needs to be something professional, they're out there. They're, get on Dr. Phil's site. Yes. Angela says, Jotana, I feel like it's depression. Life is stressful surrounding by lots of worry and concerns of what's going on in the world today. So don't beat yourself up. Uh, oh, sorry, it made me expand it. Let me go back up here. Don't beat yourself up that you're not ready to do something like nails when the time, the day is right for it to happen organically. God, that word is, seems to be the word today, huh? Yeah. Keeping up with the people who uplift you, just someone to have a fun conversation with. Keep us going. You are a sweet soul. Keep shining and be you. She's looking forward to seeing your cute face one day soon. Aww. You are precious. Thank you. I love, it. I love it. And Tiffany says that you guys share the same middle name. <laughs> oh. Nail tech. Oh, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And then Sonia says, this is an amazing therapy session. I really needed this today. This is real talk. Thank you. And Sonia, yes. You know, Tech Talk Lives, I've loved them. But let me tell you right now, they are more powerful than ever before and i can tell you it changed tuck tuck lives it will it will be more real like this instead of being all formal and at the nail desk and asking the person to you know be in their place of business no nope. no nope. it's changing yeah i think everything will change everything's going to change behind this um yeah i mean how long is this supposed to last you know with us being out of work before you know just the norm changes i have a friend on um Facebook. She's here in Columbia with me. I haven't had the opportunity of actually meeting her in person yet. Her name is Donna. Um, she goes by Mrs. Goodfoot. And um, we, I created a like round table group for nail techs here in the Columbia wow. area because there's, there's not a lot of us that get together on anything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to change that. And Donna, you know, has been posting in the group and saying, you know, this could go on. We don't know how long how long this is going to go on. So, yeah. what steps are we going to have to start taking that are going to completely change the way? I mean, on top of our normal, you know, sanitation and disinfection, you know, mask, using gloves, um, using them properly, taking them off when you're supposed to if you touch something else. I mean, just the extra stuff. Yeah. You, you've even seen the. Uh, I guess it's like a poly, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. whatever it is, sit stuff in front of you. The stores have them now. Um, and, and then your clients stick their hands through and 
you know, um, I, I don't know what that's going to look like. I know if I have to do that, I know what mine's going to look like because I'm going to be taking my markers and writing quotes and funny things on it and stuff like that. Like I'm going to use it for the good if I'm going to have to use something like that. I don't want it to go that way, but you never know. It might. And so we got to mindset ourselves to say, OK, am I still going to produce the same quality of work if there's a, a clear partition between us? Yes. You can have the same conversations. It is going to make it weird when there's something like that. It does make you feel like there's a block. But you know what? It's a mental one. Yeah. You can still see them. So why would we let that hold us back? You could fog it up. You know? Yeah. Do you, do you think that's going to happen? Oh, wait. No, did you hear me, Amy? Back up. Back up a second. <laughs> it cut out. What did I got part of it, but I want to make sure I heard all of that. I said, you can fog it up with your breath and write messages. <laughs> <laughs> I pictured that. I went into that room with you where I saw you. <laughs> so wait, you want your artwork to look like this, right? <laughs> Straight down the middle, right? Right. All right. Oh, I love it. It reminds me of, you know, when you have the little video thing and you put a face on yourself and it has like the bunny ears or it has the glasses, you know, whatever on there. It reminds me of that. We can make ourselves look like whatever we want that. We could put makeup on so that on the glass. So when we look up, our clients will see us with makeup, but we really don't have any on. <laughs> kind of far fetched, but hey, we got to make light of this. But this won't really happen. And, uh, yeah you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We can either go with or we're going to fight it. And the end result might end up being the same, right? So at some point in time, I'm going to change the mindset and say, all right, maybe this won't be forever, but it is for now. And this is what I want to do. And I want to see these people and they're not going to care. They're going to be thrilled to set the hour, hour and a half, two hours, three hours, whatever with you, no matter what it is. They were looking at, they were happy to stick their fingers through a mail slot. Right. 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 Yep. Um, Marlene, I, I'm sorry, I've missed quite a few comments on here. So I, I scrolled back through, but um, it says from Marlene, she says, Amy, so many people are reaching out to me to do their nails that never even really spoke to me because now the other places are closed. I'm so, so depressed. If I could do them, I wouldn't because I don't have the confidence. I have all of the products, the machines, but no confidence. And she's sick of it herself. Marlene. That's so powerful. And I've talked many times that confidence, it, it, so many people say confidence comes from within. A portion of it does. The rest of it comes from what we do and the feedback we get from it. And the more positive feedback we get back, the more it builds our confidence in a way in the right direction. If you are confident in what you do and you put it out there and you get a whole bunch of negative feedback, that proves that the confidence that came from within was short lived right? To get it to build and grow and grow and grow and build us fully. It does come from other people. It does come from the actions of what we do. We can't do the nail art and put it out there one time. It needs to be wearable. Somebody needs to show it off. They need to shine with it. And that's hard for us to have the confidence to do the one, let alone to try to mimic it two times or 10 times on their nails, right? So confidence comes from that trying and that little spark within you to know you can do it, have the client and be honest with them. You know what? I've never done this before or I tried it and it was a fail and I'll try it again because you're believing that I can do this. That alone, that honesty that you shared and what you can share with them, even if it doesn't turn out like the picture, they see your effort and your value and they will shine and they will show it. That comes back to you in so many ways and so the confidence it's hard because you have to put yourself out there first for it to come back so yeah jotana do you want to you have you are a shiny and sorry started out with this so what do you have to share with that <laughs> okay so first of all with clients um going back to being honest i'll probably say that once a day girl i'm gonna try this on you OK, if it looks bad, we'll wipe it off and we'll keep it moving. We'll do something else. Um, and and nine, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to surprise yourself. You're probably going to do it really well. Um, I know, right? But but yeah, being honest and, and being able to say, hey, I've never done this. 
Um, and even sometimes like I don't say anything and I just do it. And then once it's over and it looks okay, I'm like, woo. And they're like, what? And I'm like, I had no idea what I was doing, but doesn't it look great? You know, I know. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. So, kind of yeah. little fib, a little lie by omission just to, you know, um, see if I can do it. And as far as the confidence level goes, Amy, if I'm being all the way like transparent and real here, I don't, I don't have anything for her except for that. I understand where she's coming. From. I'm playing with slime. Okay. That's what I've got over here, but I, I completely, it's my de-stressor. I completely understand where she's coming from because yes. I lack a lot of confidence and for her, it's, going back into the salon right after this is over is, is where she feels like she's lacking confidence. Right. Um, I, oh, I so get it. Fear, it, fear can be crippling yeah. and I'm, I'm grouping confidence and fear together because a lot of the reason why we're not confident a lot of time is because we're fearful. Yeah. Well, why are we fearful? So for me, these past couple of weeks, I have learned that, you know, cause I, I'm so open and honest and I'll say, Hey, fear cripples me. I'm scared of this. I'm scared of that. I'm so fearful to do this. I'm so fearful to do that. Um, I want to educate. I want to have a school. I want to do all these things. I want to do nails at fashion week, not every year, but I want to have the experience, you know, and, but I'm so fearful. I have these great ideas that pop up, but I don't do it because I'm worried about what somebody is going to say or what somebody is going to think. And at the end of the day, I have learned that, yes, some of it is fear, but it's also a lack of knowledge because once we have knowledge in an area, we gain the confidence we need to no longer be fearful and to come forward. So like even today on this video, I've been nervous. First of all, I don't know why Amy asked me to be here. Okay. Yeah. I've been trying to figure out why Amy Masters asked me to be on Tech Talk World Live for like, four weeks. Like, why me? Why did she pick me? What is, you know, um, and I've kind of been going in circles around it and I've been so fearful and, um, because I didn't know if I was going to answer the questions right, or if I was going to sound like this or, you know, how people were going to respond to me. And I just decided that I was okay if I didn't know the answer and I was going to be okay. And I was just going to come on here and be myself. And that, that took away the unknowing, right? It took away the lack of knowledge, which kind of took away the fear a little bit, the anxiety, because I just decided I was going to be myself, even if it meant, you know, cutting the cartwheel across my yard for y'all, you know, whatever <laughs> it was, I was just going to be myself. Um, so I think, you know, what, whatever drives your fear, I guess try to pinpoint that and decide if it's a lack of knowledge. If it if it's a, a, a lack of knowledge that's taken away your confidence in that area and what can you do to fix that? There's so many things that I'm insecure about, man, like you you just don't even know. You don't even know the the things that I'm insecure about. And um because there's still so much for me to learn. Um, mm -hmm. That's part of the reason why I haven't been like, oh, I'm an educator and this is what I do and that, because there's still so much for me to learn. I'm like a sponge. I, I'm, I'm taking it all in, you know, and, um, but I'm fearful because I don't, I feel like it needs to be put together and put together well and put together perfectly. And I need to know exactly what to say. And it has to be perfect like this. Mm -hmm. And I can't say shit on accident and <laughs> that I just said and you know like so there's all these things and, and the anxiety fills my head like that like uh, you guys are listening to it I'm sure so you're feeling like the you know all these all these emotions and so and I feel like in order to educate somebody on something I have to be a master of it and I have to be perfect at it and in my head like I know that that's not necessarily true because there are people on different levels that need to be taught on different levels. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to be like Allie Baker when I grow up. Okay. Me too. Yes. But you know what? I've interviewed Allie.
And do you know Allie wants to be somebody else when she grows up? But they all, we all have this, right. we don't see that. We see them up here and they're like, I want to be up here. Like it's a continuous thing. Right. Or Allie would be like, oh, who me? Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so you just said something that I was like, oh my God, that's a whole other talk. I probably shouldn't bring it up, but I can't help it. It's going to spill out. So. Um, I had to do a video this weekend in um, this challenge that I'm doing and the guy had us like close our eyes and we had to like be honest about what our lie is. What do we lie to ourselves about? We all have a lie. And I was like, I'm not lying. I think after all these years, I've been pretty honest with myself. And so I closed my eyes. I listened to him. And then all of a sudden, for the very first time ever, I was like, I'm not enough. I don't feel like I compared to the other people. I don't have enough knowledge. And I was like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? Like, I would never have said that, right? And so I sit in there and now when I'm doing the video, I'm in my studio and my salon name is called Perfect 10. And my clients chose that name. It was on a, on a chalkboard because it was before whiteboards came out. It was on a chalkboard, we had names and it came down to Amy's or Perfect 10. And I was like, I don't really want it to be Amy's because I wanna grow this and I don't want people to say they work at Amy's. I wanted them to be a part of it. And so we right. chose Perfect 10. Okay, so that's how the name came out. Well, we got shirts made, hats made. Do you know how many times I'd walk up the street and they're like, oh, she thinks she has a Perfect 10. I'm like, it's a nail salon, like, come on, you know? Or we'd be at trade shows or we'd be at events and they're like, oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, what can you do with these, you know? And I'm like, well, we can get them. We can approve that, you know? Like, and then I had clients that would come in, like I have one client, Kim, that only had nine fingers. And she was like, well, do I get a discount? And I would tell her all the time, like, did you read the fine print underneath perfect 10? It says almost imperfectly perfect, you know, or whatever. Like we would make fun of that. But I realized that day I have lived. So when I went to go live on the video, the name is on that fireplace that I have. And, and I realized it's right there. And I thought it was right above my head. And I was like, I've lived under the umbrella of perfection for 28 years, even longer than that, because I've been a perfectionist somewhat my whole life. But when it came to work, I always felt like I had to deliver the best. I always had to be the best. And it wasn't. And all the time, do you know how many times I've apologized? I'm sorry, these aren't perfect. Do you know, I, do you know how many times I've said that even just months ago? I'm sorry, these didn't come out as perfect as I thought they would be. I am perfectly imperfect and i didn't own that until a few days ago when i was being real with myself and realized that i am never going to be enough you know why because every time that i get to where i think i'm good at something it opens the doors and there's something else well then you're not good enough again right you're back down here again and then i get good enough and i master that and i'm proud and i create a workshop on it and guess what I see another picture out there. I hope I'm never good enough because that means if I'm enough and I feel that I'm enough, that means I'm not gonna grow anymore. And that's never where I want to be. So then I was like, wait a minute. So I had to go live in this group where there's 41,000 people in there and share a two minute video of my lie. And I realized my lie is also my truth. I'm not enough, but I never wanna be enough. And yeah, I've been under the umbrella of this name of Perfect 10 for 28 years. I'm not gonna change my business name now. I'm gonna own it and quit apologizing that it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect ever. I'm right. imperfectly perfect. And I started owning that last week during the worst of times on my, my most powerful times because I've opened up and allowed other people to impact my mindset. It's been amazing. That's so, awesome. That's yeah, awesome. I couldn't help but share that. So you're gonna have to keep doing that, Amy. So oh. last week was the first time. So you have lots of more times to remind yourself that it's okay not, not to be perfect. Because I have to tell myself that every single day. And a lot of days it wins and I don't, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's uh it, it's it's a one of those things you have to work on. I know it ties into the confidence. We get the knowledge, we try it, we implement it in the best that we know how. And sometimes it works, but it's never a fail. You still right. did it. It was still a win right. and it was a right. learning process, right? So we were talking about sparks. 
you know, the one spark tends off five other sparks and it might be the fifth spark that makes sense. And now you're focused on that. Forget the original spark. You know, right. we don't know, though, until you continue to open up and learn. And like I said, never look at yourself like this is good enough. We know we can always try to be better. But at some point in time, you need to say, you know what? This is good enough. Like, wow, I just did that. This this is good. And that's enough. Your yeah. clients give you the yeah. feedback all the time. Why do we self-sabotage that? Yeah. I don't know. Wow. My, my, my whole morning has been this. <laughs> Thank my you for being on yesterday. And you know why I chose you? Because multiple times your name and your post kept coming up in my newsfeed. And I listen to that now because I know that this is something telling me hello, you need to look into this person. And then I Facebook stalked you and then I Instagram stalked you. And I was like, whoa, wow. She must have a story because look at where she is right now. Like I can look at people's artwork and I can see their passion in it. And I can go there. They, I know they have a story. And then I can start seeing other posts and then your comments on other people's posts and see that positivity. And I gravitate to that. Well, your name just yeah. kept getting into my head. And finally I stalked you. And then the finally one day I was like, okay. And you guys know, I usually book these out three months in advance, right? So I do them every week. I book them out three months in advance. And um, right now I have extra time. So like even Thursday, I'm going live again. So, I mean, uh, I'm doing more while I have the time and I'm not going to stop there. Do you know how many people have stories that I can share? This is a never ending tech talks. Like I never, I don't see this stopping another year going, Oh, that was enough. Oh no. no. You're just no. getting started. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, again, I've missed many comments on here and, um, uh, hopefully, oh my God, there's a lot. So you guys, we're, we're just going to have to go through this on replay and just know that everything we've shared today, um, is from our heart. And obviously we're not alone in this and it's real what we're going through and it's emotional and it's powerful and it's the mindset and how you're going to say, okay, today is the day and, and do it. So spark it and ignite it and allow it to shine and right now you might not be able to shine you might not be able to do your best work right now because we're not able to work but like Jotana shared if you got the knowledge and you practice it who's yeah. to say that when you don't open it will just everything will just start flowing and that's your time to shine like yeah. oh it's there's powerful. so many people right now doing um demos free demos free classes yes a lot of companies have their classes you know have price right now or super cheap Go and learn the technique and perfect it for yeah. sure. I mean, now's the time to do that if that's what you feel like in your heart you want to do. Yeah. Not like or like what we shared earlier, use this time to rest up. Yeah. Netflix binge, like eat, <laughs> be be naughty. <laughs> but 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 also don't stay there. Right. You know, this is a long time to stay doing nothing and 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 it, it will continue to go darker and darker. But the more you surround yourself and get into our groups that are offering all these free things and just try it, the more it's going to it's going to keep you from going all the way. So ah, I love it. You, I have to push myself to do things like that um, or else I will stay in that place. Um, so I am yeah. a true testament to that. Um, just call up a friend, talk about nails, you know, call a nail sister, call whoever, do a talk live with Amy Masters, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever it is, like everybody's accessible right now. Like your mentors, your people you look up to, they're sitting at home too, you know, mm -hmm. reach out to them. Um, and it's, it's just like when you go to a show, like it's like a spark, right? It like refuels you and you're ready to go. And you're like, yeah, I learned this and I took this class and got this yeah. new e file and, you know, I'm going to go do this. And it, it's, it, it'll, it'll work the same way at home. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Until we can get out there and do it again. We got to take advantage of this time right now and all these special offerings. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. So, Tana, you know what? I know we scheduled this a long time ago, and who knew that it was going to be like this? But you know what? You came on the most perfect day to share your sunshine in so many ways. Thank you for being real and being vulnerable with us. Because look how many people were in the comments 
that we don't, uh, sadly, we don't get to answer all of them. And if they're powerful as what we've answered live, can you imagine what this is like behind the scenes of people who are afraid to speak up? Message us, message somebody. Yeah. I'm looking in the camera now. <laughs> message yeah. us because you're not alone in this. And no. um, there's many of us right now that are strong that can help, but we're not strong every day and we need you to lean on, right? So it's that give and that take, let's, let's use each other to be stronger and to get past this. Yes. So thank you, because this this could have not have worked out more perfectly than today with you, even though you had all these things against you and your phone's not working and all of that, which we hope that that does change. But thank you yeah. for your time. I love it. So if you're watching this on replay, please be active in the comments, just like you're watching this live, because that's where we'll see it too. And then tag our names if you need to, because if not, we might not see it, right? Or private message us. And then um, let's share these resources while we have the time right now to be each other's resources. So let's let's share that love. Absolutely. Yeah. Jotana, thank you. Thank you wholeheartedly. You're welcome. Thank you. I enjoyed right. you. All right, you guys. So remember, check the events section. That's where I post the Tech Talk Lives. And I know like Gail and some of the other girls have posted in there if they're gonna go live so that you guys can mark it off in your in your appointment book that normally has clients right now. You can fill it up with all these great um, tutorials and stuff. And so if you click going, it will translate it to your time zone unless you listen to me and I'll give you the wrong time like I did to Jotana this morning. And so, <laughs> So um, it's better to put yeah, trust it, right? So thank you for your words of wisdom and all of that. And guys, I look forward to working with you more in the in the future, stronger than ever. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. Okay.